Now that I have a way to manage my recipes, I wanna actually turn these recipes into meal planning and actually have a queue of meals that I'm gonna have at some point. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So the first thing we need to do is actually jump into our project and run pythonmanage.py, start app, and meals. So inside of here, we are gonna be creating a model that's gonna keep track of our meals. It's separate, of course, from our recipe itself, but they are highly correlated. Now, in my case, I'm gonna have a hard connection, as in a foreign key, between a recipe, a user, and a meal. Because essentially what I'm saying here is all of my meals will be based in recipes, no matter what, right? Even if there's no ingredients, it will still be based in recipes. So that means that in my recipe model, I'm actually gonna be using a lot of these things inside of my actual meal model. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that recipe stuff in there and I'll get rid of things that, well, I certainly do not have just yet. So the first thing is I actually want to replace all of the instances of a recipe with simply meal. So I'll go ahead and copy this and do a command F or control F, depending on what system you're on. And then we want to replace recipe with simply meal. And I wanna make sure that I'm using capitalization here so it only does the capitalized items here. And then we go ahead and replace all of them. Okay, so the meal query set itself right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and say pass. The search feature, I do not wanna have it just yet. Maybe I'll bring it back at some point, but for now, I'm gonna leave it out. So what are the attributes of a meal? Well, certainly the user. Another one will be the recipe. So we will need to import that recipe model. Now I can certainly have a name and description if I wanted to. At this point, I'm gonna make it as simple as I possibly can and get rid of those things, okay? So active is an interesting field, this Boolean field saying whether or not this is the proper meal. This is a meal that we actually want to be in our current state and in our current queue. And so I actually wanna think about this, like what are the options for a meal? So let's just go ahead and put a little string here as to what are the potential options, okay? So a meal can be, maybe it's a pending, maybe it's done, um, and maybe it's removed, right? Or maybe it's also aborted somehow. Um, or maybe instead of removed, we have expired, right? So expired, done as in, hey, I actually had it, it's completed. Let's call it completed instead of done. Expired means that perhaps at some point we have an expiration on here, or every week we run a job that just expires old meals. I'm not gonna do the expired yet, but I have an idea that that might end up happening. Aborted would be if I actually went to, let's say one of these meals here, or one of the recipes here, or in the actual queue itself, I could just say remove, similar to this right here, but actually keep record of it in my database. So that it would be a, another status here. And of course, unfortunately, active itself is not a great indicator of those three potential states that this meal could be in, right? Now with active, it's sort of more like pend or like ready to go or not type of thing. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and get rid of this altogether. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a text choice. So what we want here is we'll say class of meal status, and it's gonna be models.textchoices. And so what I want is I'm gonna say pending, completed, expired, and aborted. Okay, so each one of these has to be set to some sort of value. Now, the reason we use this methodology is so that we can actually come down here and say status being models.char field. And I can actually do a max length of something like one. And if I do a max length of one, that means that I can actually use this text choices to significantly make each entry smaller. So that means that if I come in here and say choices equals to meal status dot choices, I will have all of these as potential choices. Now, what are the values actually going to be? So if it's a length of one, each value would basically correspond to the first letter in what's written here, right? So now we have a potential for meal statuses all to be, well, one of these values. 
This is great for database storage, right? If the user never actually saw this, this would actually be fine for us. Uh, but we actually want to have it so users can see it. So in here, I'll go ahead and say pending. And then here, completed. And then here, being aborted or expired. And then finally, aborted. Right? So we will see this really soon as to what this ends up looking like in the admin. Uh, but the idea here is that those are going to be the choices for this status. And I want to give a default in here of being pending. Okay. And so now I can actually test against these pending items. In fact, what I can do is also filter them. So in my query set here, I can do def pending and we can run something like self dot filter status equals to the mill status dot pending, just like that. Right. And of course you could go along these same lines for all of the other ones, which I'll just copy and paste in. Uh, but that's definitely something I want to have pending is actually my queue. This is the list of items that are coming soon, something that I haven't completed yet. And of course, completed is that other one. Aborted, this is just a list of things that, hey, I used to have, don't have them anymore, and expired is just one we're not going to put in just yet. So that actually, I think, is pretty cool. This actually gives me a nice foundation as to what I need to do. Now, since I have this, I'm going to go ahead and add one more query set element in here. And we're going to do by user ID. And it's going to be taking in self and user ID. And it's just going to return self.filter user ID equals to user ID. That, of course, is not the user object, but just the user ID itself. We could do the same thing with the actual just user object. Either one is completely up to you. They both work well. Um, sometimes I like using the user ID because it's a little bit smaller of a footprint to move something around, uh, but it's nice just as is, either one. Okay, cool. Um, so now we need to actually get our recipe in here, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and do from recipe.models, import the recipe model, and bring that in to our form key here. And I'll go ahead and cascade each one of these meals, okay? Cool. So the next thing is we want to have these. Let's just check if we even use them, each one of these imports. I don't use either one. I did that by just quickly copying and pasting into the search field there. And it's okay that it's all capitalized too. Um, some of the other things I might use as well. I don't think I use Q. We can again look for that. And I just use query set. So I'll get rid of that too. And right now we don't actually have a URL set up. Um, and all these things I also don't need. Cool. Um, so I should be good to go. We'll have to verify this. One of the things um, that we have here is the settings that auth user model, that's fine. Um, most of the time what you'll see with my projects is the user being set up up here. Not sure if I mentioned that before, but that's often what I'll do. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and add it into the admin. So from .models, we're going to import the meal and then admin.site.register that meal. And of course, now that we've got all of that, we've made changes to models and the app, we need to add it into our settings here. And I'll put it in to meals. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our migrations Python manage.py, make migration. And it looks like we have a invalid import. That should be a recipes. Okay, let's try that again. And Python manage.py migrate. And I should still have the server running. It's possible that I don't, but I do. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, jump into the admin. And now I've got meals in here. And so let's go ahead and add a meal. And again, our users any recipe object, and here's where we can see what's happening with it, right? So that is explicitly tied to these choices here. Just a really simple and easy way to grab choices. Now, another way to do choices, I'll just mention, is to declare something like this, where it's a list of tuples. And this actually gives you, let's say for instance, um, like that. This would actually give you the same results from a user perspective, but not the same results from a coding perspective in here, right? So then we would actually have to, you know, 
search or filter by what the actual database value is uh, instead of using something like this where it will just find the database value for us. Again, the middle value here is the database value. That's what will be stored in the database. Everything else is about our code or our users for our proper meal queue. Now, the nice thing about this being associated directly to the recipe itself is that when I actually go to a recipe, any of them, I can see data about it. I can see all sorts of data. A good example would be how many of these recipe items are completed? Like how many do I have in my database that have been completed? Also aborted or expired, right? So this can actually help me better plan certain recipes against others, right? So maybe I add tacos every week, but I always abort them. Like I never actually end up having them or they you know, expire. That would tell me a lot when I'm actually trying to add this into my meal plan for that week. So it also can help me better understand the ingredients I'm using a lot of, right? So if you end up using a lot of garlic powder, maybe you're gonna be like, okay, well, I'm gonna buy this in big time bulk instead of buying it in a smaller quantity each time, right? And that's true about pretty much any of your food. And the thing is, you probably already have a sense of this if you cook for yourself all the time. But if you actually do cook for yourself and you're not really keeping track, you're just buying things as you need them, then perhaps you, well, are a little bit lost on that data and adding that data in might help you make better decisions when it comes to purchasing. Now it's making a lot of assumptions there and we don't need to worry about that because we're really just trying to build a software to make the potential for all that happening. And so now we're at a point where we actually need to implement the adding and removing from the meal queue right directly in any given recipe.